On this video, I'm going to go through specifically how we can use autophagy to balance hormones. Never done a video. Okay, autophagy. It has become this crazy buzzword. In fact, I've got to let you all know that one of the first videos that took off here on my channel was when I explained what autophagy was and what hour of fasting autophagy got stimulated. So I wanted to bring you specifically how we can use autophagy to clean up hormones. And I'm primarily going to be talking about sex hormones, and this does relate to both men and women. So men, don't jump off. There, uh, you're going to hear that there is a way that you can use autophagy and lots of different ways to stimulate autophagy to balance hormones like testosterone. But let's dive in. I, well, let's get to the meat of this. Here's what I want you to, th to think through. When we get really excited about autophagy, what I want you to understand is that your body came pre-designed with a self-healing detoxing mechanism. We call it autophagy. That's all that fancy word means. And what I also want you to realize is that there's a lot of different types of autophagy. So different parts of our body actually do different versions of autophagy. For example, I've talked about this before that mitophagy is how your mitochondria use autophagy to clean themselves. Well, good, good news is that we also have a type of autophagy that will regulate your hormonal system. And it's called crinophagy. Crinophagy, it's kind of hard to say. It's a new term, nobody really talks about it. So, uh, and it's, a, you know, these big words when we're diving into science sometimes are helpful and sometimes they just get in the way. So, what I want you to realize is that there is a special type of autophagy, this crinophagy, that works on your pituitary gland. It works on your ovaries and testes and your adrenals. And it is specifically made to clean the cells up in those areas and regulate, it's an intracellular regulation of hormones. Now, when we're talking about hormones, what I want you to realize is that hormones are about balance. It doesn't mean more, hormone, uh, more of a hormone is better. Cortisol is a great example of that. Uh, we like a little bit of cortisol. We don't want too much cortisol. Insulin's the same way. We like a little bit of insulin, but we don't want too much insulin. So when we look at these sex hormones, it's not, the goal is not to get the most, especially women who are going after 40 as you go through those perimenopausal and menopausal years, your hormones are going up and down. Sometimes you have too much, sometimes you have too little. And this is where chronophagy can come in and help to regulate the hormonal production and the receiving of hormones in those parts of the organs that regulate your sex hormones. So it's super cool. And this is the reason I wanna make that nuance clear to you is you're in control. You're the one that's doing the self-healing. This is why I love fasting because it shows you how you can heal yourself. And when we tap into chronophagy, we can heal this whole team of organs that are working so hard for you to balance out your hormones. So that's the first thing I want you to know. Second thing that I want to say underneath the topic of chronophagy is that with estrogen specifically, so remember that there's a lot in when we're dealing with hormones there's a feedback loop so we get the pituitary the hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary the pituitary sends a message to the to the ovaries the ovaries send a message back up to the hypothalamus so this feedback loop is always going and there are certain things that we know about estrogen and autophagy for example when there are proper amounts of estrogen, it can actually help stimulate autophagy. You need estrogen to stimulate autophagy. We also know that when you go into autophagy, you clean up the organs that help to make estrogen. So there's this beautiful marriage between estrogen and autophagy, and it works in this feedback loop. Some of the, the conditions, the chronic conditions we know that are helped by making sure that we're diving in and out of autophagy at a regular rate in order to clean up the estrogen system within our bodies. And by the way, that is for both men and women. 
men, you have estrogen too. And a lot, most humans on this planet right now are walking around with too much toxic estrogen. So when we use autophagy and we, and we clean up the organs and we balance that intercellular estrogen level inside the cells, you're now preventing diseases in these particular uh, organs. Here are the, here's what you can clean up using autophagy. Breast, kidney, bone, ovary, and check this out, you can balance your, your uh, nervous system, your central nervous system. These organs are easily cleaned up, the estrogen in your breast, like let's use breast cancer for example. We know that you can balance out your estrogen levels by going into different phases of autophagy, and we're gonna talk about that here in a moment. So really cool when we see that certain tissues are very sensitive to cleaning themselves up when we move in and out of autophagy. Okay, now let's dive into some practical ideas here that I want you to know. That one of the best ways to get autophagy going in your body is to put yourself in places where there is a hormetic stressor that activates autophagy. Let's use fasting as an example. If as you learn to fast, there's always, I mean, we all have this, there's always a moment where it's tough. And in that moment, you're like, what did I do? Why did I sign up for this? Why did I listen to that crazy lady on YouTube who told me to fast for 17 hours? And you get to that place where it's uncomfortable. Don't give up there. That's the beautiful place because that is a hormetic stress and the body goes, hmm, I'm under stress right now. I better stimulate autophagy. And that is what we want. So you cannot stay in comfort and, and, and initiate autophagy. That doesn't happen. With mTOR, that can happen because mTOR is the opposite of autophagy for those of you who've been watching these videos for a while. But autophagy needs you to have a little bit of a hormetic stress to be able to initiate it. So in fasting, we say 17 hours is where we start to see it initiated. And I wrote all of that out, by the way, in Fast Like a Girl for those of you who wanna dive into the nuances of fasting and autophagy. But I want you to realize you gotta get a little uncomfortable to get autophagy stimulated. You want to know the foods that will support hormones? Guess what? I have them for you already. It's a free giveaway. Just click the link below and I'll send you a list of all the foods that support amazing hormonal health. Okay, other things that I want you to know about autophagy is that, and I get this question a lot, what pulls you out of autophagy? So when you go into autophagy, the cells start cleaning themselves up and old cells get spun off. We've talked about this. This is called apoptosis where the intelligence goes, whoa, not a good cell. It's a really bad cell. We better get rid of it. And it gets rid of it. Heavy metals will get pushed out of the cell. Viruses die off in the cells. So there's a lot that's going on when we stimulate autophagy. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. So what do you do to pull yourself out because you're uncomfortable? Or what do you do that you may inadvertently be doing to pull, pulling yourself out and, and that you don't want to do? So it's very, very simple. Hormetic stressors put you into autophagy. And what pulls you out specifically is when your glucose goes up, when your protein levels go up, and when you eat in general. So it's not just glucose, but when nutrients go up. So it's glucose, it's nutrients, specifically nutrients that are associated with protein, but a lot of the vitamins and the minerals and the amino acids, if, if you get too many of those, you'll pull yourself out of autophagy when glucose goes up and then protein. So anything over 20 grams of protein is gonna pull you out. Now, Here's the million dollar question. I hope you, those of you that waited till the end of this video, you, you're in for a treat. I probably should have mentioned this in the first part. How do you measure autophagy? Oh my God, we've been talking about this. Everybody's been asking this. I've been saying we gotta get a CGM of some kind to be able to measure it. But my friend, Dr. Boz has come up with a really good ratio and, and kudos to her. Here's the ratio. You take glucose and you divide it by your ketones. And what you're looking for is that when that number is 80 or under, you're now in a weight loss version of autophagy. 
according to Dr. Boz. And, and, and if you listen to the interview that I did with her here on the channel, you can go find that video. Um, she said it was her best guess. It was the best guess she could do. She created this ratio to be able to help her mom who was going through cancer. So anything under 80 is where we're starting to see autophagy stimulated for weight loss. Anything under 40, when that ratio is un under 40, we're starting to see the immune system get reset. So that means you gotta get glucose down and ketones up to be able to make that BOS ratio go under 40. And anything under 20 is where we start to see reversing chronic disease. So now where do hormones fit into that? This is a question I had asked myself as a menopausal woman, like, okay, well, where do hormones fit into that? And I think if we are somewhere between 80 and 40 in the BOS ratio, that you are starting to repair this hormonal system, that you are stimulating chronophagy, which is that part of the, the mechanism of autophagy in the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals, ovaries, testes, I think we wanna shoot somewhere between 40 and 80. So there you go, there is just a big overview of how we can look at autophagy with, with hormones, I wanted to leave this as a foundational uh, video for you so you understand the ideas before I get into the application. Autophagy and hormones, it is, it's a beautiful system you already came programmed with. You don't have to buy anything. You just have to learn how powerful you already are and how to stimulate this self-healing mechanism we call autophagy. So as always, I hope that helps. You wanna dive into autophagy more, uh, I have a great video called uh, The Best Way to Extend a Fast and Boost Autophagy. So go check out that video. Once you click into this fasted state, somewhere in between eight to 12 hours, now the trick is how do we stay there longer? 